guys, what's up? My name is Dom. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I typically make bookish content, movie content, and anything else in between because I like to do whatever I want on this channel, and today is going to be bookish. We are going to go over my April wrap-up and May TBR. I have five books to go over for April, and for May, who, who knows because I don't even know. So the first book I read in April was Tokyo Ghoul Re, Volume 11 by Sui Yoshida. I can't obviously tell you what this is about because it would be major spoilers because this is the 11th book in a series that's a sequel to a series, but the original series is about a boy named Kaneki who goes on a date and he's living in Tokyo which is running amok with ghouls which are creatures that eat humans. He goes on this date, things go things go wrong and then he has an organ transplant and now he is half human, half ghoul, and he's trying to overcome that. I ended up giving this volume 5 out of 5 stars. It just made me feel really giddy inside. A lot of people were just were just coming together. There was a lot of forgiveness happening. Just a lot of sentimentality. One of my ships is now canon, and I'm so excited about that. Another ship was hinted at to be canon, and it just made me feel good all around. So 5 out of 5 stars to this volume. The second book I read I actually listened to on audio, which is I Am Malala by Malala Yousafzai. So this is about a woman who got shot by the Taliban because she would always stick up for women and girls to get an education, and that's what she was fighting for. Taliban didn't like that and she was getting very, very popular, hence why they shot her. So I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars as well. This was actually a very great reading month now that I'm thinking about it, but you'll see that later. I have a very hard time talking about nonfiction, like I've said before, so bear with me here. But I thought this book was actually very well written and very well narrated as well because like I said it was, I listened to it on audiobook. Malala herself doesn't narrate the book. She narrates the prologue but the rest of the book is narrated by someone else. And this book is actually about more than what I thought it was going to be. Going into it I thought the events of the book would start when she got shot in the head or like maybe some info here and there but like it would start there and talk about the after effects. But actually this book takes place from when she was born. A few chapters before the end is when she talks about getting shot in the head and then the last few chapters are about the aftermath, so we get to see more of her life than I thought. This is basically an autobiography of her whole life. Something I actually didn't know, I had no idea who Malala was until she got shot. Like, I remember seeing that in the news, but I didn't realize she was famous prior to that, so that's something I actually learned reading this book. And it was interesting seeing her life and how very and how supportive her parents were of her and just seeing point of views about everything like her point of view about education actually her point of view about 9-11 because 9-11 had huge effects on the Taliban and how they ended up treating the countries that they were that they were in and I don't really know what else to say other than that this book captivated me and how much like I was able to learn from it not only was I able to learn about like her life but I was also able to learn about Pakistan itself and the Pakistani culture and the Pashtun culture and it was actually really cool that she would mention reading Twilight here and there just because I was I was re kind of rereading the books and watching the movies as she was talking about Twilight and she's just so so brave like I would never have the guts to do what she did she like knew the Taliban was after her too and she still she still got up in those stages and spoke like much braver than I am and I have to give her props for that. Also reading about the after effects of her shooting because it's not like she got you know she got shot and everyone knew she was gonna survive because she talks about how at one point people did think she was gonna die no one had no one had any idea if she would live or not and just the science behind that because she talked about how um they obviously, they obviously had to break her skull in order to get the bullet from her head, so her skull was preserved in her stomach, which I thought was interesting, but it wasn't preserved well, so they ended up having to put, like, metal in her head. She talked about her move to England and how, and how she can't go back to Pakistan anymore, and that, that was really sad. It hit me right in the feels. And just like the ending line, she ended this on a very good note. She's an amazing writer and also an amazing speaker. I'm glad I finally got to get to this book because I remember, I remember when it was published and I've been wanting to read it since it was published. So I finally got around to it. It was well worth the read. So then I read Tokyo Ghoul Re Volume 12. Again, can't tell you what this is about, but I can say my ultimate ship because in Volume 11, one of my like secondary ship became canon, but my ultimate ship became canon in this one and I was so happy. I was reading this at like 2 3 in the morning and I just I just couldn't be happier. I was so giddy. But there are two wolves inside me, right? One is very happy that my ship is canon. But the other recognizes that the sequence of events was very very rushed and I I can't tell you why because that would be spoilers. They went from dating to very very serious very fast. Like, I, w I was kind of spoiled for this, so I, like, I knew the ending to the manga, but I was under the impression I wouldn't see that, that 
sequence of events until like later volumes I was not prepared for how much how much was going to happen in one single volume and even then it was like it wasn't even the whole volume it was like here's the first half that was going very very well and then from like the halfway point to the end very very rushed and I've noticed that with this author he does have a problem with pacing oftentimes the pacing in Tokyo Ghoul could be off sometimes it's really great again like the first half of this volume but then other times the second half happens. So I am gonna say the 5 out of 5 stars is for pure entertainment, not so much critically. Like, critically, I would give it like three and a half stars because of how rushed it is. Like, as happy as I am that they're canon, I do want I do want that like angst. I do want that slow burn. And I like I know all romances aren't slow burn. All fiction's not gonna be slow burn, but it's not even that it's not even that this is not slow burn. It was just very rushed. And then the other thing I'm wondering is that there is a trans character in the sequel series, and I'm just I'm just wondering how own voices feel about said character because of course the only trans character is going through this arc that again I can't really describe without spoiling but it's like why are you doing that to the only trans character you know so I have some questions about that I'm very curious with how own voices reviewers feel about that yeah so <laughs> but I am I am happy that my ship is is canon but again the two wolves thing I'm, I'm excited to see how the last four vo I have four volumes left I'm excited to see how the last four volumes handle it maybe like then the pacing would slow down a bit but we'll see I got four volumes left to read so the fourth book I read was holes by Lewis Satcher this was a reread like I said in other videos I'm rereading books I had to read for school every month the month of April was fourth grade and in fourth grade holes was required reading I remember sitting at my desk and the teacher would read it to us and we'd follow along and discuss and watching the movie the movie of the adaptation of this is pretty good but this is about a boy named Stanley Yelnitz who's falsely accused of a crime and it's either go to jail or go to Camp Green Lake where he has to dig holes so they send him to Camp Green Lake, and every day he has to dig a hole that's five feet deep and five feet wide, and he's suspicious. And that's all. That's all I can say without spoiling. This is as good as I remember it being, although I did drop my rating a little. My original rating was five out of five stars, and I only dropped it to four and a half stars, because at some points I was a little like, okay, you know, get with the program, keep going. But this was just as entertaining as I remember. Um, yeah, the writing is a bit juvenile for my reading style now, but that's also because this is geared towards younger kids. I am 23, like I'm not the target audience anymore. I did have to change my mindset a bit for that. What was really cool during my rereading process is that I actually remembered a good, like a good chunk of this book. So what was really cool was actually seeing all the foreshadowing. There is a lot of foreshadowing at play in this book and it was very cleverly put in the lore of the the lore of the Stanley Yelnitz curse was very cleverly done. It was just a great read all around and I'm so glad I got to reread this book. So the last book I read in the month of April was actually not a good read. So four out of the five books I read were great. One was not, and that is unfortunately The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. This was also a reread. If you're new here, um, I mentioned it a few times that I had to read this like the summer between 7th and 8th grade, I think it was. Um, so I, I was put into some like summer reading program and then, but they didn't have room in my age group so they had me take a placement test and my placement test put me above my age group. So I was a 12 year old in a class of like 15 to 17 year olds. Very intimidating. But this was the book we read that summer and I did not like it. I hated it. I thought it was very boring. I gave it one out of five stars at the time but now that I'm older I chalked it up to my age and now I know how you're supposed to read this book like you're not supposed to read it for the end result you're supposed to read it for the journey my rating went up but like it is boring oh my god some things dragged there were some but there are some chapters I kind of just skipped and like skimmed through spark notes because it, I was it was dragging that much and it's very unfortunate because Tolkien like paved the way for fantasy and I commend him for that like a lot of people base their books off of his, or not base them, but they grab inspiration from Lord of the Rings. The man created his own language. I'm not smart enough for that. Like I have to give him props for that too. Some of the imagery was beautiful. Like I would love to see Lothlorien. I think like I would I would love to live there. The imagery of that was beautiful. Sam Gamgee needs to be protected at all costs. But at the end of the day, this book was very 
very boring. I will not be reacting to the movies on this channel. I, I have seen them. I've seen the first two and I didn't like them. I actually fell asleep during the second one, which I know is like embarrassing because I heard that was the best one. But I also don't want to give up on the series. Like I want to be able to say that I have read the Lord of the Rings trilogy in my life. So I will be continuing. I will be reading the other two. And I have heard the Two Towers is better despite falling asleep during that movie. I just don't know when I'll get to them and I don't know how long it's going to take me. Because I was trying to do what I usually do when I read books. Usually when I read books, I try to do 50 pages a day. That was hard with this one. So, so I changed my tactics to a chapter a day. And that helped a lot. That actually helped get through this a lot. So who knows how long they're going to take me to read. Who knows when I'll get to them. I don't know. But I will say, out of The Hobbit and this one, so far my favorite is The Hobbit. As boring as I thought that book was too, I still gave it 3 out of 5 stars. And it like I felt like I was reading it around a campfire. Like I felt like it was a campfire story. Yeah, I just I just hope it gets better, honestly, like more entertaining. Maybe I'm just not the target audience for this. So now we're going to move on to my May TBR. For honestly, for the month of May, I have no idea what I'm going to be reading because I will not be here for a week. So as of filming this, I'm leaving for Florida in like 2-3 days. But I'm going to be in Florida for a week, so I'm not going to have a lot of time to read. And I don't really want to force myself to read for the rest of the month because it's going to be hectic because the family I babysit for, they're moving. So I may or may not be out of the job. I might have to find a new one. I don't know. It's going to be an overwhelming month, so I'm not going to put too much on my shoulders. But I will talk about the two books I'm going to get to for sure. And what I'm currently reading, I'm currently reading The Martian by Andy Weir. And this has been on my Goodreads TBR for the longest. It was the first ever book I added to my want to read shelf. I opened my Goodreads account in like, in like March, April of 2016. So for five years, I've been waiting to read this book and I finally got it. This was about a man who had a mission to Mars and then there was a sandstorm that made them abort the mission. The rest of his crew escaped safely, but he did not. So he was stuck there and he's trying to find ways to survive. I am only 114 pages into it. And I re I'm really enjoying this so far. Our main character is a very funny man, but a lot of the science is going over my head. But it's still enjoyable. And it's going over my head because I majored in zoology. I didn't major in chemistry. Chemistry lost on me. I took two class. I took two semesters of chemistry. If it were up, if it were up to me, I would not have done so. But I couldn't. Do I couldn't graduate with my major without them. And let me tell you, I struggled in that class, and I'm glad I never have to see it again. Yeah, so the chemistry's going over my head, but other than that, this is actually a very enjoyable read. As for the audiobook I'm going to listen to, because I've been listening to an audiobook every month, it's going to be The Sixth Extinction. I forgot who this is by. This has also been on my Goodreads TBR since, like, 2016, so I'm finally glad to get to that. This is a nonfiction as well. All these, all these audiobooks are nonfiction, I'm noticing. And from what I remember, it's just talking about how we're, we're currently in a sixth extinction. There has been five major extinctions in the past, five mass extinctions, and we're currently in the sixth one, and that's what the book talks about. And I do have my fifth grade read picked out. Fifth grade was just like fourth grade. We were handed out books, and we read them as a class. We did not have to take them home. And the book I will be reading is Tuck Everlasting. I forgot who this is by, but I remember like immensely enjoying this book. I loved it. But I can't even tell you what happened in the book anymore other than that the main family, like Tuck's family, lives forever, I'm pretty sure. Like, they're immortal. And it's because, like, they drink some water. Like, that's all I can remember. I really wanted to read when Zachary Beaver came to town because that was the first book I had to read in fifth grade. But my library does not carry it, surprisingly. This will be the book I'm reading while I'm in Florida. I'm only going to read, like, a chapter a day because I'm going to have other things to do besides reading. So even though theoretically I can probably finish this book in like a day, it's going to take me like a good two weeks probably. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what you guys are reading and what you're planning to read. If May is going to be a busy month for you guys as well. So I'm looking forward to the Florida trip, but I'm not looking forward to like when I come home and dealing with all that. It's, we, we love to see it, you know. But if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Y'all know the drill. And without further ado, I'm going to peace out and I'll see you guys later. Ciao, tutti.